Now that we know what polar coordinates really are from the previous video, in this video I want to try to sketch the curves of various curves that are expressed in polar coordinates. So my first example is just r equal to 2. And at first glance you might not even think that this actually even is uh, some curve. You might just think it's evaluating r at some value. It's kind of like the curve y equal to 2. The curve y equal to 2 is not just saying uh, uh, it's just some point where y happens to be equal to 2. You're thinking of it as this graph of this horizontal curve that has the value y equal to 2 for every value of x. That's what we're saying here. We're saying that r is equal to 2 for every value of theta. So, in other words, if I'm trying to uh, graph what this curve looks like, it doesn't matter what the theta is. It doesn't matter where I am on my theta, whether I'm completely horizontal, this portion over here is where sort of theta is equal to zero, or if I'm up on the, what is in Cartesian, the y-axis, where theta is equal to pi over two, it doesn't matter where I am, the radius is always two. So what this is, is the equation of a circle that has radius r equal to two. In fact, a fixed radius r is kind of like the easiest curve to sketch in polar coordinates. If we had to come up with the equation of a curve in Cartesian, it would be the x squared plus y squared is equal to 2 squared, which is just a whole lot messier because polar coordinates just sort of naturally reflects the symmetry of circles. And so r equal to 2 is this very simple equation that describes a circle very simply in polar coordinates. Here, however, we have a somewhat more complicated example. I've got r is equal to 1 plus sine of theta. So if I'm trying to sketch this out, I'm going to aim to have a clean answer to what r is equal to 1 plus sine theta is on my left-hand side. Before I do anything, I'm just going to try to plug in a few values of theta and see what the r's are going to get. In other words, I'm trying to list a few different points just to, to try to get a handle on what's going on here. Okay, so I've evaluated an R at a various uh, bunch of early theta values, and let's see if we can put them on the curve. So first of all, I should remember where theta equal to zero is. That's right down on the x-axis. And generally, as I go counterclockwise, this is going to be my theta value. It's increasing, and it's increasing from the value of zero right down on the x-axis. So if I plug in theta equal to zero, I'm beginning down on the x-axis, and it tells me that its value is the value of one. So the coordinates of this point in polar are going to be expressed as one comma zero, which, in other words, is an r value. It is the r value of one and a theta value of zero. Incidentally, it's also one zero in Cartesian, but that's just a coincidence, as we'll see in a moment. So next up, I want to figure out the, the theta equal to pi over four. So now this goes to an r value of 1 plus the 1 over root 2. It's a little bit bigger than 1. So if I'm down here on the, on the sort of line, that, that's going to be the line that has the, the theta value of pi over 4, and it's some value on that line, maybe this one right here. And then if I'm going to go all the way to pi over 2, it's up to here at 2. So this first point was an r value of 1 plus 1 over root 2 and a theta value of pi over 4. And then up here, it is going to be an r value of 2 and a pi divided by 4. And then I can carry on. I have another point over here. I have another point down here. And there's more. I, I could fill in more things. So plotting these points has been nice to give me a sort of a, a, a template. I know I have to, my curve has to go through these points. But I'm still not really convinced what this thing's looked like. It's, it's a little bit weird. So now I want to figure out how do I interpolate between these points. So first of all, if I think about my theta values, uh, as my theta increases, it goes up like this. And then what happens is that the polar coordinates tells me how long my arm is. It tells me what the r value is as my theta goes along. So just between the two first points, the, the theta equal to 0 and theta equal to pi over 4, what it tells us is that it's it's as I go along, my arm is lengthening. It starts at length one, and then it goes to length one plus one over root two, and then I, when I try to get completely vertical, its radius is two. So I'm going to go and try to fill in this curve, something like this. It's as I go around, up and up and up, increasing my thetas, 
my radius gets bigger. I go through this point, I carry on, my radius gets bigger still, and now finally it's up at a value of 2. But then at this point, as I now start continuing on with my thetas, my radius starts shrinking. And it starts shrinking because my sine has hit the value of 1, which is as big as sine is ever going to get. And then sine starts getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, all the way eventually going back down to 0. So in this region, between pi over 2 and pi, my sine curve is getting smaller. So 1 plus sine theta is going from the value of 2 down to the value of 1. So I'm going to keep on sending it down. Now it's the 1 over root 2. And now it's at the value of 1. So now you might be tempted to think, this is just a circle, you might be tempted to think I'm just going to fill it in and that's going to look like a circle, Trevor's drawing's kind of bad, maybe it is a circle, but it's not. We've got to be careful. So now let's look in the next region. We've gone all the way so far from the uh, theta equal to zero all the way over to the theta equal to pi. And now I want to start looping back around. I want to take theta values between pi and two pi. So if I remind myself of what sine of theta looks like, we were initially all in this first region where the, the sine was contributing positively to the r. But we're about to switch down here into this region over here between the pi and the pi over 2 where now the sine terms in my radius is going to start contributing negative values. So it's going to take the r from 1 down to 0. And so when I graph this, what's going to happen is this value is going to curve around like this. The radiuses are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. They're starting at 1 and they're going down to 0. So then down here at the 3 pi over 2 where I've, I've really sent it down to a radius of 0 because my sine was minus 1. After that my, my sine is still negative but it's less negative. And so it plops around like this. So I get this interesting thing. This is, by the way, referred to a cardioid. It kind of looks like a heart, so that's why they call it a cardioid. So my basic approach to sketching any of these polar curves is to think about if I start at theta equal to zero, as my theta goes around, what happens to my r value? Does it get bigger? Does it get smaller? And then I can just sort of sketch letting my theta values rotate around and then setting the r value to be whatever it's supposed to be.